Today, we're going to talk about how to get a grip on your addictions. I'm sorry, your cravings. Now, this is a very important topic because if you have cravings, you're going to have a hard time sticking with keto. You're not going to be consistent. So you have this little tiny gland in the brain called the hypothalamus. And within that hypothalamus, you have a tiny little group of cells that control appetite and feeling satisfied with foods. And so there's information coming from your eyes, from your smell, from your taste, from your stomach, all these perceptions, and they're coming in through the body up to that little center and giving it certain information. And based on what's happening, it'll send down signals to the body to tell when you had enough food or when you should start eating. And so let's say there's some reason why you need food, it will start creating the sensation of hunger, which is kind of like a, an emptiness, an uncomfortableness, feeling very unsatisfied. So we have various hormones that are affecting this. We have leptin, which tells the brain to stop eating. It's like a turnoff switch. Now your fat cells make this hormone, the stomach makes it, your muscles make it, and so it decreases hunger. Then you have another hormone called ghrelin, which does the opposite. It increases hunger. It tells the body it's time to eat, and they, so they work together. And when you eat, you stimulate insulin, and insulin triggers leptin, eventually causing you to feel satisfied. But here's the thing. There are other sensors in your hypothalamic computer that regulate glucose, amino acids, fatty acids, salts, vitamins, and even minerals. So based on how many nutrients you're consuming coming in the body, that information will go into the brain and then tell the body um, to crave certain things to try to get these nutrients. But this is where it breaks down because sometimes when you crave certain nutrients, your body's not going to crave like kale. It might crave other things that don't have that nutrient in it, unfortunately. Now, you probably heard of people who, who have um, craved like dirt, for example, to get iron or ice. But mainly people are craving things like bread, pasta, cereal, crackers, candy, sweets, things like that. Uh, and maybe sometimes you'd be craving um, chocolate, which has magnesium. And one of the reasons why you might crave these grain flour products is because you're low in B vitamins. But here's the problem. When you consume these grains, you usually consume them in the form of a refined carbohydrate, which basically has, it's empty nutrition. There's empty calories. So when you eat that food, you not only trigger insulin and create issues like insulin resistance, but there's no turn off in the hypothalamus. We don't have the ability to turn that thing off. So you're never going to be satisfied. And you may already know this because it's very difficult to consume just a little bit of sweet or refined carbs. And as a way for your brain to cause you to consume certain foods, it's going to give you sometimes a pleasure sensation. Okay. And that works through dopamine and serotonin can increase the happiness sensation. And these foods tend to raise your mood, make you feel better, decrease stress and pressure for a minute until the blood sugars start going down. And this whole cycle starts over and over again. So junk food, including like things with MSG, give you this artificial sensation. And people literally live for sensation. Unfortunately, the sensation they get is an artificial sensation. It's not long lasting. It doesn't come from things that give you real good, healthy sensations. Now, it's really a trap because the refined carbohydrates raise the insulin and cause insulin resistance. And when you get insulin resistance, now you can't absorb your nutrients anymore. What is that going to do? It's going to make you want that food, but not really become satisfied. So that actually keeps the cravings there and keeps you hungry. And then we have foods that are void of nutrition. So we never have a chance to satisfy that hypothalamus and then stop that hunger um, feedback loop. If you have low bile, if your gallbladder is missing or you have a sluggish gallbladder or you have a fatty liver and you can't produce enough bile, you're going to have a difficulty absorbing the fat soluble nutrients from the foods that you eat. And the fat soluble nutrients usually are very satisfying to your brain and especially the hypothalamus. 
And this is why some people, when they start taking purified bile salts, they start feeling more satisfied after they're eating. It's also why people, when they start keto and intermittent fasting, get rid of their insulin resistance and they become very, very satisfied. In fact, their hunger goes away, their cravings go away, and they're very, very satisfied because they're absorbing more nutrients. If you're consuming too many carbs, your body won't let you tap into your own fat. That means you're running on your, your sugars, your stored sugar constantly. So it's going to go up and down, up and down, up and down. Another reason why you're going to be very unsatisfied and you just won't have the ability to go for any period of time without needing some carbs. And this relates to the next one, which is low blood sugar. So anytime you have low blood sugars, you're going to want sugar. Okay. So one very important tip relating to cravings is not only do you need to cut down your carbs, but you need to raise the nutrients. You need to eat nutrient dense foods, especially the foods that are high in the fat soluble vitamins. Okay. Cod liver oil is a really good thing. Fatty salmon, fatty fish, and leafy greens and vegetables high in potassium, magnesium, folate, and vitamin C. And another important thing would be your environment. If you're in an environment that you're visually seeing food all the time, or you're smelling food, or it's just around and you're thinking about it all the time, those can all trigger the pleasure neurotransmitter called dopamine. And it's triggered by the anticipation of eating something, not when you eat it. So when you're looking at a donut, for example, you're anticipating eating it. You're not getting any of those particles in your eyes that are going into your stomach. Or when you're smelling some pizza cooking in the oven, you're getting some particles in your body, but it's not enough to satisfy you. But it's definitely going to increase dopamine. So it's very important that you avoid these temptations by changing your environment and not having pictures of food, not seeing food, not smelling certain junk foods, or temptation is going to just be too high. And once you start consuming uh, fast food, it is so difficult to stop because of the MSG, which is going to trigger hunger. It's going to definitely not make you satisfied, and it's going to increase insulin. It can increase the insulin by 300%. They use MSG to fatten mice in their obesity studies, by the way. So it's very important to address all the issues that we talked about. The difference between a craving and addiction is a craving is a strong desire, but an addiction is not only a strong desire, but the inability to stop or resist or control that temptation. All right, thanks for watching. I have quite a few videos on this topic. I put them down below, check them out. Hey, before you go real quick, I have a course entitled How to Bulletproof Your Immune System. It's a free course. I want you to take it, and here's why. Here's you, here is your environment. Everyone is focused on this over here, avoiding your environment. But what about here? What about strengthening your immune system? That's what's missing. This course will show you how to bulletproof yourself. And so you can tolerate and resist your environment much better by strengthening your own immune system. I put a link down in the description right down below. Check it out and get signed up today.